yeah everyone are seeing my ppt na hello yes we can see it yeah 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 first i will give my introduction i am working as a freelancer sinus that is and pain specialist in himalaya cancer hospital junagadh that is the 150 bedded specially onco hospital and in that hospital we are majority our area is uh, mainly head and neck cancer dominant area so we are doing cases so every day we are uh, getting like three to four uh, oral cancer surgery we are doing a command of surgery or oral uh, head and neck surgery so mainly we are nowadays we are dealing uh, majority cases with uh, restricted mouth opening or difficult airway because many cases after post radiotherapy or post surgery uh, they are coming for revision surgery uh, or uh, with recurrence or some cases with submucosal fibrosis or restricted mouth opening are there so how can we avoid the trachostomy in that case so mainly we are dealing with difficult airway cases in our setup Uh, we have found one academy that is global anesthesia skill development academy and that academy mainly will work on base of how to improve the periphery practice or resource limited setup practice or uh, means uh, freelancers practice so we have chosen our theme also accordingly that how can upgrade ourselves from basic thing to the <coughs> advanced thing how we how our path will be there we have innovated one mobile size pns device mainly for freelancers because freelancers don't have usa access everywhere and uh, they are facing so much difficulty in uh, giving blocks bl by bl blind technique or some are not confident with blind technique also so yeah and i have written the public awareness book on painless labor also uh, that is mainly how to convince the patient and what kind of questions are arising in patient's mind when patient uh, we are trying to convince patient for labor analysis or we are trying to uh, tell patient that uh, you want labor analysis during <coughs> your normal delivery process so that times so because this is totally new concept so patient might not knowing that what is the outcome of labor analysis or what is the actually procedure they are doing in labor analysis that all these things in simple words we have elaborated in this, that book and it, are, nowadays it's in gujarati language but we are trying to convert it into hindi as well as english language also so <clears throat> it will be easy for patient to get convinced for labor analysis in future so <clears throat> now <clears throat> yeah our aims and objective behind this global anesthesia skill development academy so our vision is to empower as well as encourage the anesthetists who are working in rural as well as resource limited setup hello sorry no operate the hello hello yes yeah. so our vision is to empower and encourage the anesthetists who are working in rural and resource limited setup to acquire the precise okay. skill and sharpen his or her knowledge to tackle the iris surgeries and ultimately improve the quality of perioperative care in rural and resource limited areas of the world <laughs> our mission is to provide best perioperative care and minimize the anesthesia related complications and ultimately prevent the anesthesia related very operative morbidity as well as mortality in rural and resource limited okay. areas of the world okay. as much as ha question over hmm laparoscopy ha uh, dr roturaj can you unmute your sorry uh, can you mute yourself because your voice is disturbing you us uh, <laughs> so this is the our vision and mission behind our global anesthesia skill development academy this some photos i have catched from my freelancing uh, setup because uh, since 5 to 6 year i am doing freelancing practice <coughs> nowadays also i am attached to one hospital as a freelancer only <coughs> but uh, now i am i have restricted myself to one hospital but as a freelancer so uh, i have catched up many photos that you can see that you know, whoever are working in freelancing setup or very very set setup they have seen such kind of scenario uh, that there will be so much <coughs> compromise in all way for anesthesia care will be there see in this setup there is no anesthesia work session this is this kind of like ent setup is there or orthopedic whatever setup like general surgery setup all majority freelancing setup are they don't have anesthesia work session they don't have even closed circuit also <coughs> so sorry
sometimes they don't have a high para monitor also only like pulse oximeter and nibp and ecg like single lead or three lead only you can so uh, see in that monitor <laughs> sometimes they don't have like advanced uh, equipment like uh, uh, boogie or some airway equipment whenever you uh, face this difficulty in intubation video laryngoscope everything that is the uh, so hard to think about all this advanced equipment when uh, freelancing practice will come in your mind <laughs> so even some hospital don't have even basic equipment also some don't have like a air airway equipment airway uh, oral or nasal airway ambu bag <laughs> so all these things we have to take care of ourselves luckily in single and straight forward cases we are giving so nothing is happening but when you will comes to uh, like high risk cases or some critical thing happen they will, that time you will realize the importance of that kind of advanced equipments <laughs> this is another uh, also what is set up i saw you showed you so here also simple <coughs> open like a not a close anesthesia trolley also this is open uh, anesthesia trolley where they are managing with main circuit gia cases so that they don't have even they don't have the vaporizer also you can see that hello then jar <laughs> they are keeping and in that they are putting the isoflurane anesthetists are putting isoflurane and managing the cases somewhere uh, in some cases like in some setup we don't have nitrous availability so nitrous oxide also not there we have to manage the case with <coughs> oxygen cylinder and inhalation agent without nitrous oxide so many many things will be like uh, in in compromise thing <coughs> will be there in such kind of uh anesthesia setup uh, third one is this is the like a uh, uh, old surgeon who ever are whoever are still practicing more than 60 year of age the <coughs> when i hardly in like a two to three setup when i went there there uh, there was a not a proper what is setup also you can see that windows is there window open <laughs> door is also there and uh like a computer also they are uh, putting inside the operation theater and like uh, these are all like uh, we are working in uh, village area, taluka place, or we are working in resource limited area. They have they might have been seen such kind of operations in other setup also. In this setup, they are conducting GAKS or they are conducting uh, many uh, under anesthesia surgeries also. <laughs> so these are the setup we have mainly freelancers or resource uh, anesthetists who are working in limited uh, like uh, rural area they have to face the so much difficulty while managing the cases so uh, now i'm coming to the real challenges of the freelancers uh, in his practice and these challenges will be divided into mainly two <coughs> things one is the subjective changes uh, challenges means uh, our skill related challenges or our um, manpower related challenges and one is the objective challenges like equipment related challenges <coughs> so first i'm coming to the objective challenges so these are the objective challenges like lack of an advanced anesthesia workstation other lack of uh, advanced life saving resuscitation equipment including some hospital don't have like a, airway advanced airway equipment even not a basic equipment also they don't have some hospital uh, single setup don't have ambu bag also <laughs> i have seen so, in so many setup in during my practice lack of life-saving emergency cardiac drug also some setup don't have any like advanced cardiac drug like amiodare one like adrenaline nor adrenaline uh, dopamine nitro ntg so many life-saving drug list long list is there so majority setup they are keeping just atropine, uh, mephentermine and uh, ketamine and propofol, uh, glycopyrrolate, that's it. So many setup don't have advanced like a arithmetic drug or any like anti-arithmetic drug or any other like a uh, <coughs> resuscitation drug uh, like adrenaline or adrenaline or any other advanced cardiac drugs. Then lack of standard monitor. Here I'm, I want to talk specially about pulse oximeter. Because in so many setup, you will see that even if pulse uh, patient saturation will be in lower side, but still pulse oximeter will show saturation normal. Even waveform also will show as a correct waveform. So <laughs> I want to tell that uh, 
in that so many like in market there are so many chinese company also penetrated the bulk after covid that scenario also got worsened that so many indian company also came into market uh, to manufacture the pulse oximeter so they are majority are not following the standard uh, standard parameters or standard calibrations so in that case even if <coughs> you will see that uh, patient is deteriorating but saturation on monitor it will show normal so this thing also is very important whenever you are going for freelancing practice that you should check the your uh, surgeons uh, like ot setups pulse oximeter or ECG or any like NIBP or everything because sometimes fast reading also can misinterpret you <coughs> uh, case and it can lead to perioperative morbidity as well as mortality. I have very bad experience with one pediatric case. Patient came for circumcision. That was like a two-year-old baby only. And the baby came for circumcision. So usually we are giving a sedation and uh, we are doing that surgery under penal block with sedation. Okay, sedation plus uh, regional blocks we are conducting such kind of like uh, small cases so patient uh, baby was uh, sedated with ketamine iotropine and after sedation we had given the penile block but uh, in between the pulse oximeter we have kept uh, and pulse oximeter showing waveform also uh, correct and as well as saturation also showing reading normal but actually uh, baby was like a see tongue fall happened in baby we didn't realize at a time and afterwards, surgeon realized that that patient's blood is getting sinused. <laughs> and he alerted me that, uh, sir, see the saturation of this patient because I am feeling that patient's blood is getting sinused. So I saw the saturation. Saturation was normal. Welcome was also normal. But when I tried to wake up the baby, baby was actually not able to wake up. It means uh, baby was not actually able to move. Uh, then I gave the painful stimulus to the baby. But still he was not moving. And ultimately, I changed the, the monitor and I checked the uh, ox, uh, like a uh, finger, uh, like a pulse uh, means uh, oxygen saturation with other pulse oximeter, and it was showing like a thirty percent. So uh, this kind of scenario can happen in your practice also. So in that kind of case, whenever you are like a <coughs> facing such kind of like a scene, that time you will realize the real importance of standard monitors as well as standard uh, equipment for anesthesia care. So afterward, we intubated the patient and we uh, luckily we were in like a safer side because uh, when saturation was just dropping down, that time we realized the, <laughs> that patient is, something is going wrong. And we ultimately intubated the patient and we uh, resuscitated and we shifted patient to the ICU and everything uh, went uh, to normal. But sometimes, no, you don't have time and you, especially in freelancing setup whenever uh, you will like the such kind of case will come to you or you will face such kind of uh, critical thing you don't have uh, ET tube like a small size ET tube uh, luckily that case was there in uh, one multi-speciality hospital and I got the ET tube like five size uh, five number five not five number four number it is tube immediately and uh, immediately I integrated patient and uh, we saved in, in that life Otherwise, pediatric cases, we know that uh, suddenly it uh, desaturated and suddenly patient can went into collapse also. So, my ultimate aim uh, to convey message is uh, that will be we are mainly taking the um, we are taking all these things lightly, but that thing are also making such huge difference whenever it comes uh, to such kind of scenario. <laughs> so, all these things are very big challenge for freelancers. Now coming to the subjective challenges. There are so many subjective challenges are also there in freelancing practice. Mainly there are less skilled surgeons because some surgeons we are knowing that they don't get enough exposure or they don't have enough like, skill. They are taking sim <coughs> for simple PFR or simple like uh, uh, small surgery also they are taking long, long hours. Like PFR surgery also some surgeons are taking three to four hours. I have faced so many surgeons like that. So bleeding also will be more anesthesia the time duration also will be more and in that case like if, uh, if you are given spinal then slowly slowly uh, spinal effect also can regress uh, <coughs> when times will go up so that is also a big challenge in freelancing practice second thing is less of trained anesthesia skill technician because see in multi-speciality and other setup everything will be okay because there will be good equipment airway equipment will be there helping hands will be there 
trained ICU staff will be there, even physicians also will be there to helping you. But when freelancing practice comes into your mind, there will be a lack of everything in your practice. You don't get a trained staff, you don't, don't get a trained uh, good equipment, you don't get any like emergency uh, things or emergency drugs if you require during <coughs> your uh, case management. So all these challenges you have to face in your freelancing practice. <laughs> Lack of advanced anesthesia skill and knowledge. See, uh, that many anesthetists, they don't know how to, like, uh, see, difficult airway cases in freelancing setup whenever you are comes into such case. Uh, if you have not dealt many cases in uh, such kind of scenario, then it will be very much difficulty to face such kind of challenges. So, <clears throat> a lack of uh, advanced anesthesia, airway management skill, or lack of advanced like uh, knowledge, some kind of arrhythmia also, if you are not able to recognize, or like uh, sometimes you need emergency echocardiography, or sometimes you need <coughs> emergency uh, like IV cannulation or uh, any other thing. And then if you are not skilled enough, you are not knowledgeable enough that what kind of complication is going on. You Because see that anesthetist job is like within a second you have to decide the uh, which uh, thing is going wrong. You don't get enough time. <coughs> Everyone we are knowing that a uh, surgeon uh, do mistake, they have some hours to correct the mistake. If physician does mistake, they have some days to correct that mistake. But once anesthetist does mistake, there will be a hardly minute or a, <coughs> a few minutes to correct the mistake to save the life. So and that thing you have to keep in mind that you have to be well prepared to watch situation also if you are doing freelancing practice. It's not like that I am a freelancer, so I am not taking such kind of case. So I should not know uh, how, what kind of arrhythmia is coming. How uh, I don't know that uh, I, I don't have much arrhythmia knowledge. I don't have any like emergency echocardiography knowledge. So everything it's as a perioperative physician, you should know everything <coughs> as a uh, just screening you know you just you want you just have to recognize the complication what actually happened and how to correct it in right away <clears throat> because if you don't know you don't realize the what complication is happening and you are treating it as the wrong way then ultimately thing can go into worse some uh, rather than improving the patient so that advanced anesthesia skill not anesthesia skill i am telling you that very operative physician skill you need. <laughs> Even I, initially I was also feeling why I need to learn the ECHO. But when I, I went to the Narayana Hospital Bangalore to learn the ECHO, after what I realized that how much easily I can handle the high risk cases when I know the ECHO cardiography very well. Because I, because you see, physician, when you will send the patient for physician, you exactly, the physician don't know exactly what he wants to know in echocardiography. Whether he wants to know valvular heart disease, whether he wants to know like uh, any other cardiac issues. Or not. So all this clinical scenario will be there in your mind only. So just you just prove the, uh, just put the probe in a, a parastonal view, left and right axis, short and long axis view or a Michael Paul Chamber view, you will get better idea about your patient's heart condition. So that thing is also perioperative echocardiography thing is also very important to learn. And that is also uh, most important whenever you are coming to manage the high-risk cases. <coughs> and then uh, fourth thing is lack of effective communication between anesthetists, patients and surgeons before surgery. Everyone knows that <coughs> Uh, this uh, so, so, surgeon is also knowing that uh, this patient is critical. Anesthetist is also knowing this patient is critical. Even patient is also knowing that this patient is high risk case. But if you don't have proper communication or you don't know how to communicate with surgeon or how to communicate patient uh, regarding this case, then ultimately you can land up with uh, complications or you can land up with uh, uh, you can make patients scary and ultimately patients don't want, want to, uh, patient will deny to operate and ultimately case will get cancelled and surgeon also will get like, uh, I type angry. Angry. surgeon also will get angry. No, so no, in that no, all no, these no, things, no, case, no, you should no, first no. learn that how to convince the patient whenever you are dealing the highest. Sure. <laughs> well mentioned about that you 
सर्जरी What kind of anesthesia related morbidity can happen in postoperative period also? Because the during surgery we will be on standby. We knows that uh, uh, how to tackle the case uh, if something goes wrong. But after surgery only God will be monitor our case in freelance practice because surgeon don't know how to monitor the case, how to see. Only he knows that BP, SP, O2 uh, that. Well, uh, thing you know, they know they don't know UCG thing. They don't have idea about the pulse. Like uh, they don't know pulse checkup, like manual checkup of pulse, uh, uh, radial pulse or anything. So, uh, and and majority cases, such critical cases, complication are happening in post-operative period only. Because see, intra-operative periods you will be on standby, so you will taking care of patient. But in post-operative period, what will happen? First, that anesthesia effect will wear off, so surgical stress will go uh, high, and second thing, no one will be there to look at the patient because see, uh, once surgical stress will increase, tachycardia will happen, so cardiac supply demand ratio will get mismatch, so ultimately can lead to perioperative, sorry, ah, uh, uh, postoperative ischemia or postoperative cardiac complications, cardiac morbid uh, morbidity as well as mortal mortality, and because of Stress hormone release and everything. So uh, postoperative like uh, coagulation profile also will get disturbed or uh, cardiac and uh, respiratory related complication also uh, can happen because of uh, high surgical stress. So intraoperatively pain you are taking care of pain as well as the patient's vital. So nothing will happen. But once you will come out from a uh, operation theater and patient will get shifted to the ward or. Uh, Any special room or everywhere, anywhere. At uh, that time, you will realize that uh, everything will goes in wrong way, and ultimately, complication uh, chances of complication will be more in post-operative period. And fourth one is inadequate pre-operative assessment as well as optimization before surgery. We know that uh, in freelancing practice, single setup they are sending patient for physician reference. Uh, rather than the anesthetic anesthetic pre anesthetic checkup hardly 5 to 10% setup like pre anesthetic setup they are sending uh, patient for a pre anesthetic evaluation and all and actually majority physician don't know that what kind of surgery they are going to operate uh, in which surgery chances of bleeding will be more in which surgery patient will go into the under spinal anesthesia or general anesthesia so all this thing <coughs> uh, they can't justify at 360 degree angle and ultimately uh, in pre operative assessment or pre operative optimization only some kind of uh, like uh, 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 inadequacy will be there so surgeon so if they don't know that uh, patient is going to operate under general anesthesia and they will not uh, properly optimize the respiratory uh, thing and ultimately patient uh, when will goes for ga ultimately patient will uh, goes under uh, for uh, like bronchospasm more respiratory complications <clears throat> so in that uh, cases inadequate pre operative assessment as well as optimization can lead to peri operative morbidity as well as mortality so that is also very important uh, very important at least i am what in my freelance practice i am feeling that at least if you are not able to go and check the patient at least we should do video calling to the patient and we should tag uh, talk to the patient or we should talk to the uh, physician who are going uh, Like uh, who are going for a patient's reference, just talk to them that I want this kind of anesthesia for this kind of surgery, and this kind of surgery chances of bleeding will be more. So you just see this this thing thing, and you just try to optimize from your side uh, that this same thing should be uh, as much as optimized. So you will get better idea about like uh, what actually patient's condition is there before directly seeing patients from table. So uh, you can do video call to the patient, or you can do the video call to the uh, hospital staff, and you tell tell uh, them to give phone to the patient, and you can assess the rough airway assessment. You can do you can collect some important history from patient also. So you will get better idea about 
uh, your patient. So uh, that thing is also very operative, uh, sorry, uh, very important uh, to pre-operative assets as well as optimize the patient before any kind of surgery. So ultimately surgery is the teamwork. It's not a job of anesthetist. It's not a job of surgeons. It's not a job of staff. It's a combined responsibility. It's a combined uh, goal to be achieved with a uh, uh, mature relationship. There should be a no place of ego in that because majority of freelancing setup, I know that such and as much egoistic. Sometimes they don't listen what we want to try or they will uh, interpret in the wrong way. So that can ultimately lead to the best, uh, compromise in patient safety or compromise in our anesthesia care. So you should choose your surgeon wisely. You should even choose your patient also wisely in freelancing practice. So all these things, it's very important. Even if, even I am recommending you that you choose uh, your trained anesthesia technician and you can give job to your, you can like uh, keep uh, one anesthesia technician for job with you. Many anesthetists uh, like the cities or like uh, the freelance practice, they are keeping one anesthesia technician with him. So sometimes some mistake will happen by you also in a hurry. So that time if you have trained anesthesia technician, uh, he or she can alert you that uh, sir, uh, this, uh, you are uh, picking wrong drug or you are giving wrong drug. Actually this patient have this kind of, <coughs> sometimes because uh, we know that patient have asthma, this patient have some kind of uh, allergic history and we are giving uh, like uh, some uh, adverse or a carboprost or like uh, during uh, a caesarean section, we don't know that uh, patient actually. So we might forget that patient have a history of asthma, we have a history of some allergic reaction and ultimately uh, after giving drug uh, can precipitate the asthma also. So uh, at that time if you have skilled or if you have smart anesthesia technician, he or she can uh, like uh, improve your practice also. So it will be hardly like 10 to 50,000 in within uh, that small cost you will you can hire the one anesthesia technician but your stress level or your work smoothness or your any other like a uh, work coordination will be improved much if you hire one anesthesia technician or skilled anesthesia staff with you for your freelancing practice. So this thing is also very important that you should manage cares as a team, not as a uh, pure and uh, sole anesthetist. <laughs> Now, how to overcome all these challenges and how to confidently manage the high risk cases and resource limited setup. So before that, I want to give an example on this. See, one time Nokia was one leading company in a market <laughs> and everywhere, even like a big, big industrialist, big, big businessman or politician were using Nokia phone. But now if you give Nokia phone to anyone, they are throwing Nokia, even small like a labor worker are also using smartphone. Oppo, Vivo, or any other smartphone. Why? <laughs> because Nokia failed to upgrade themselves according to time and ultimately led to the <coughs> uh, market, like a market diverted to the other company. So, the same thing will happen or uh, same thing will, can happen to everywhere, uh, everyone, because ultimately, what will happen? See, that if you will not upgrade yourself, and uh, uh, you can't like uh, know that uh, this kind of how to manage this kind of case and your anesthetist fellow will take over your case. You will cancel the case and your, your colleague will uh, take high, uh, take risk and he will uh, go for case and he will successfully manage that case and surgeon will get impressed with your uh, fellow anesthetist and ultimately slowly slowly surgeon will uh, divert your case to your anesthetist. So if you improve, uh, like if you day by day basis, if you are improve yourself, then only you can survive in competitive market because in anesthesia also there is so much competition. <laughs> we are knowing that some anesthetists are practicing like anesthetists plus acute pain specialists also. They are taking care of pain also. So Southern will small, all small, small thing because we have to deal with intellectual person. We are don't, we don't have to deal with like a poor intellectual person like patients or any other like a lower class patient. We have to directly, surgeon knows each and everything because they have vast experience in this field also. So they, he, is, he will be very smart to uh, recognize that which anesthetist is much smart, which anesthetist knows everything, which anesthetist is uh, like a managing case in better way. So, so small, small thing. Huh? 
the all small small thing is very very important when din aro ta asat nahi ne ah when you are going to uh, tackle such kind of cases so nowadays you need to take care of anesthesia means uh, intraoperative as well as post operative pain management also if you uh -huh. have great anesthetic so? practice so uh, moral of the is kapai kapai ka lwis upgrade yourself if you guys kapai hoy to kapai ka everyone please uh, mute yourself because some noise is disturbing us <laughs> so how to upgrade ourselves i am showing you some examples so our academy will mainly work on how to upgrade our skills and knowledge so see this is the journey of upgradation i am showing you the first you are knowing the how to give blind blocks you are giving blocks with blind technique now you should apply your technique from blind technique to the pns guided technique you will realize the difference between your success rate <coughs> your complication uh, rate your uh, patient satisfaction rate or even your surgeon satisfaction rate once you will upgrade yourself <coughs> so uh, first step just go from blind technique to the pns guided technique and from pns guided technique to the usc guided you should not see everywhere like usc trend is going on and everyone is uh, going behind that trend that i want to learn usc i want you <coughs> i can give blocks with usc only and i know now so no and tell me everything very well so the uh, usc only i want to learn i don't want to learn pns at all but it's not like that your learning so should be step wise because once you come to a your uh, practice how how many setup have usc access how many setup have such advanced equipment <laughs> so all this thing you have to think so first you have to upgrade yourself in a practical way it's not like that uh, what everyone is doing so i will go because in institute and all na during pg days and everywhere because nowadays in all medical colleges anesthetists are demanding uh, use the machine and uh, government are also supporting and even institute also <coughs> buying to uh, interesting to buy the advanced equipment for a department also so everywhere in uh, i think in all medical colleges of india <coughs> have use the access uh, and that is bad uh, good thing because uh, see we should learn advanced thing also but it's not like that we should uh, learn advanced thing only you should know each and every step of your, your curriculum uh, your journey you should know how to give blocks with pns you should know how to give blocks with blind technical so <laughs> because when you don't have any success in your practice what you will do when you don't have use the access in your practice what you will do so in all that or uh, all cases that pns can be a magical for you because see even i was practicing since uh, 2018 initially i was also confident that i don't know how to give the block with pns i didn't learn the block with pns also because i am knowing you as because i did my anesthesia from manipal university so manipal is the one of the top university of india so there everything was there because and even they are giving general anesthesia only for simple upper limb surgery simple like a radiation na picture and all because uh, they are high profile patients who are coming there and they don't want to be awake during surgery so uh, they are giving uh, straight forward gi for that kind of cases but when i came to practice uh, after my institute pass out i realized the role, real role of this uh, pns device this blind technique and all this thing after i had i learned blind technique and after blind technique i upgraded myself with pns guided blocks and after what i learned we advanced pns guided blocks like lumbar flexors sacral flexors sciatic femoral nerve block popliteal sciatic mandibular nerve block paravertebral block erect spinal block uh, iliovenal iliac hypocostic nerve block obturator nerve block many block from head to foot around 25 to 30 nerve blocks you can give with pns majority people are knowing hardly 10 to <coughs> 5 to 10 blocks with pns but 25 to so huge blocks you can give with pns if you saw the magical thing pns in it uh, so many pain management blocks also you can give with pns so you should learn pns also very well and you should learn the how physics of pns also because then only you will exactly know that uh, in which case will be specified for which uh, setting in pns some cases require two hertz frequencies some cases require one hertz frequencies some cases require pulse widths 0.3 milliseconds some cases require low pulse width some cases require uh, low uh, like a frequency so all this thing 
once you will know physics of uh, that, uh, then only you will realize the uh, how to actually use the uh, your uh, equipment. So <laughs> your learning curve should be from basic to the advanced. It's not like that uh, uh, base step. Your learning curve should be step wise. Uh, block blind technique to the PNS guided technique and then it should be a USA guided technique. It's not like that. You should directly jump from blind to the uh, USA guided. Because you, then USA also so many challenges are there. Even if you have USA machine, you, it's not like that. It's not easy job to get uh, now straight forward with USA. <laughs> USA is a very uh, skilly thing. So for mainly for low limb blocks. You can't uh, recognize, even if you are expert in USA, you don't know, you actually, sometimes you find difficulty in locating the lumbar flexor. Sometimes you will find difficulty in locating the gluteal sciatic now. Sometimes you will diffi find difficulty. That time, if you have BNS in your hand, you will uh, start, you will um, uh, identify or confirm the nub with uh, dual technique and you can exactly lock at the lumbar flexors or sacral flexors. So it's not at all about the end, even if with study also compared to the sole USD, USD plus PNS uh, can increase the patient safety and can reduce the chances of now all plexus damage or trauma. Because see, sometime majority time, uh, if you are skilled enough, you will see the needle path. But in out of plane approach or sometimes you will not see needles and blindly you are pushing needles. And you are confidently telling that yeah, I, uh, uh, I want to see the needle, I want to show, that's why I'm manipulating needles. And ultimately, you can end up with no pricking. So, <clears throat> even Dr. Hedzik, one of the head of the Nysora is also telling that use if you are smart enough and you are uh, seeing the nerve path, sorry, uh, needle path with USD, then only you can prevent the nerve damage. If you are not seeing the needle path, during USD and you are searching the needle uh, during your USD guided block, you can ultimately land up with complication more compared to the blind or PNS guided technique. Why? <laughs> because USD, with USD, you are confidently telling that uh, chances of complication will be less, so I am not land up with complication. Not like that. Chances of complication can be more with USD if you are not able to see the actual needle path with your USD. So all this thing is very important. <laughs> uh, now second, our like first is our uh, our mission. Sorry, our vision behind the academy is just upgrade anesthetics from blind technique to the PNS guided techniques. We uh, we will not teach the USG direct technique in our skill development academy because our, we are keeping freelancers or uh, anesthetists working in the resource locations. Uh, we are keeping that kind of anesthetics in center. So US accessible will be very, very less in such setup. So uh, we'll go up to PNS only during our skill development academic activity. <laughs> so uh, this is the one aim that uh, we have mainly three pillars of our academy. One is we are motivating anesthetists to shift from bind technique to the PNS guided technique for regional anesthesia. Second one is the uh, we want to shift <laughs> our anesthetist from conventional spinal to the segmental spinal because this is a new era of uh, spinal anesthesia. Everyone are going for segmental spinal. They even talk without proper judging. They don't know that what is the actual complication, what can happen because segmental spinal, you are directly dealing with spinal cord. You are not dealing with cord and equina. And spinal cord now or uh, cord damage can be permanent, converted into permanent damage also. <laughs> If your MM millimeter needle push can lead to spinal cord damage and ultimately lead to the permanent paresthesia or permanent now in, uh, sorry uh, spinal cord injury and can lead to the motor paresis also. So it's not an easy job to give segmental spinal like routine spinal. And in which case segmental spinal will be ideal? Segmental spinal is there, but it's not for all cases. You should properly judge yourself that this case is ideally fit for segmental spinal compared to the spinal, uh, the routine spinal. You should <coughs> uh, know how to differentiate that uh, according as per your skill and as per your like uh, art, uh, that uh, which case will be more fit uh, to segmental spinal compared to the uh, routine spinal. And 
segment of spinal which case you should not give segment of spinal which uh, because see nowadays people are blindly practicing everywhere segment of spinal we want to give the segment of spinal for breast surgery also we want to give segment of spinal for the thoracic wall surgery also and so many like it majority they are promoting that yeah uh, segment of spinal will be the option of the general anesthesia for trunkal surgery but it's totally wrong myth i'm telling you chances of segment of spinal complication of segment of spinal can be <laughs> Devasting can be a, a critical, uh, like a can patient can lead to cardiac arrest because sim you are dealing near to sympathetic chain, can lead to bradycardia or cardiac arrest also. So it's not easy job to give every uh, segment of spinal for every case. Uh, in spite of segment of there are so many op options are there. Like thoracic spinal, like a paramedical block is there, erectile spinal blocks is there. Better way that you should practice the dead blocks compared to the segment of spinal for thoracic surgery. It's not like that uh, that fellow is practicing segment of spinal for uh, breast surgery. So I also will start, uh, I will also like a try segment of spinal for this case. It's totally wrong with, you can land up with hazardous or you can land with dangerous complication when you will uh, try, when you will entertain your patient for uh, such uh, some kind of case, uh, cases for segment of spinal. So uh, we want to aware our anesthetists that in which case segment of spinal will be more fitable or more uh, like a suitable and which case you should avoid the segment of spinal. So <clears throat> second pillar is we are pushing or we are encouraging our anesthetists to uh, uh, in which case segment uh, whenever con Compared to conventional spinal, segment of spinal will be better option. You should go ahead with segment of spinal, but it's not like that. Uh, the compared uh, means uh, I will go uh, with segment of spinal for every case. And third, our pillar is we want to shift our colleague from DL scopy means direct laryngoscopy to the VL scopy, video laryngoscopy uh, for uh, routine or difficult airway cases. Because see. Fiber optic is the best option, but it's hardly one to two percent setup in India have fiber optic. Even if in medical college also, many medical college don't have fiber optic accessibility. So at least <laughs> we should buy our video laryngoscope and we should start video laryngoscopy because see, no doubt direct laryngoscopy is the very good method and uh, since as well, um, uh, people are practicing direct laryngoscopy. But once you will, initially I was also feeling like that. That yeah, I am not comfortable with video laryngoscopy. Why I will upgrade myself from video uh, from direct laryngoscopy to the video laryngoscopy? But it's not like that. When you will uh, uh, give the like uh, you will do the laryng means uh, throat means uh, intubation with uh, your video laryngoscopy, you realize that chances of a trauma larynx trauma will be less compared to direct laryngoscopy. Chances of uh, uh, this one, uh, the pharyngitis or uh, throat edema or like uh, chances of pharyngeal damage or uh, uh, means a post in a post-operative patient, you will assess and you will ask patient. That time you will realize that compared to direct laryngoscopy with video laryngoscopy, chances of larynx traction will be less and chance because video laryngoscopy, uh, you don't want direct vision. So with curved blood, you can give video, uh, do video laryngoscopy and ultimately, Ultimately, chances of uh, laryngeal as well as pharyngeal trauma will be less compared to the DL scopy. So, once you will upgrade yourself from the direct laryngoscopy to the video laryngoscopy, you will realize the uh, difference between that two scopy. And second thing is, <coughs> anticipated difficult airway is okay, but unanticipated difficult airway. When you will come across the such cases there uh, where that CL grade three or grade four cases. You can't see your vocal cord. You can't see your <coughs> uh, epiglottis also. At that time, you will realize that what is the importance of curved blood compared to the straight blood or compared to the direct laryngoscopy blood. Because straight forward cases, uh, all cases, it's okay that you can easily see the vocal cord, you can directly. But once in a while, you will see, uh, you will come across the uh, like a anterior larynx case or some case like the radiation induce neck stiff neck case you can't extend the neck more some cases with spine injury that in that kind of cases you will uh, realize that uh, what is the importance of video laryngoscopy so we want to shift and we want to motivate our anesthetists from 
डायरेक्ट लर्निंगोस्कोपी टू द वीडियो लर्निंगोस्कोपी हाउ इट विल बी इंपोर्टेंट हाउ इट विल मेक योर इंटरबेशन स्मूथर हाउ इट विल बी लेस क्रोमेटिक और लेस कॉम्प्लेक्स और मींस लेस कॉम्प्लिकेशन कंपेयर टू द डायरेक्ट लर्निंगोस्कोपी एंड विल गो अप टू वीएसकोपी आल्सो एज ऑफ नाउ बट आफ्टर वी आर स्टार्ट आवर फाइबर ऑप्टिक और फाइबर लेंस लर्निंगोस्कोपी आल्सो फॉर इंक्लूड आवर in our project for uh, skill development project so uh, but later uh, as of now we are in our all skill development activity we are going from direct laryngoscopy to the vlscopy and later on for advanced courses and advanced techniques we will teach our industries about fiber optic laryngoscopy or about uh, like a uh, flexible laryngoscopy also <laughs> so these are the main three pillar of our organization Uh, this is the advanced anesthesia equipment and drop kit this is the very important thing because three lens anesthetists na they are uh, blindly keeping trust on uh, surgeon that surgeon have everything they have why i will buy my own it tube why i will buy my own drop why i will buy my own uh, agel uh, surgeon have the surgeon has to buy because he, he is running the ot he is not paying me enough charge it's not like that <coughs> once you will buy your own equipment once you will buy uh, and make your own drug kit your confidence level for case management will boost up because you will feel confident because sometimes one critical thing will happen that time you will realize that if surgeon will tell i don't have that uh, adrenaline or atro uh, that no adrenaline ampule uh, sir what to do that time you will realize and whenever because of adrenaline or ad no adrenaline your patient will collapse and you can't survive the patient Ultimately, blame will comes to you only, not for other, not for other. You can't justify in uh, court of law that because of not avail, not adrenal in availability, because of not availability of ET tube, small size ET tube, I couldn't uh, revive the patient and ultimately end up up into death. It's not a justifiable at all in court of law. So once in a while you will come across such kind of scenario, you will realize that, uh, preparing the uh, advanced anesthesia equipment kit. so this thing is also very important so you just make list of uh, advanced even if i am keeping my own uh, litmus stethoscope also because sometimes you can't recognize the bronchospasm with ordinary stethoscope sometimes you can't recognize the cardiac arrhythmia or uh, valvular heart disease with your own you know, murmur you can't recognize with your uh, as what well, uh, stethoscope you should buy at least because this all is equipment are lifetime is equipment one time your uh, expenses you have to pay after that it will be goes for uh, uh, year and year so you will not need to replace every, every time so you should buy your standard stethoscope like litmus stethoscope you should buy your laryngoscope or any other like advanced uh, even I, even i am uh, keeping my fiber optic scope also with me whenever i am going to the uh, giving cases in freelancing because you should be a <clears throat> prepare uh, yeah, very well in your practice surgeon should not blame on yourself that uh, because of your uh, mistake or because of your inavailability of equipment uh, ultimately patient landed up into complications so uh, i am keeping my video laryngoscope i am keeping my fiber less uh, flexible laryngoscope also with me in my bag i am keeping my ampu bag and sometimes in my car also i am keeping one small uh, oxygen cylinder also So all this thing is very very important whenever you want to win the freelance practice. <laughs> so this image you are saying that if soldier is going to win the war without air gun or without the advanced equipment, ultimately he will get it. He will get over to fire. He can't confidently uh, uh, win the battle or he uh, or uh, he can't uh, effectively tackle the. any or uh, complication or anything goes wrong so uh, ultimately you see the confidence of the this soldier that if he don't have us uh, sorry uh, this one the air gun or any other like this uh, uh, war equipment ultimately he has to run away when something goes wrong so moral of story is you should be prepared in all way when you are um, coming for freelancing practice <coughs> yeah Uh, this thing is also very important drug labeling in majority freelancing practice we are telling that uh, i go as uh, i am oriented to the uh, everything and i don't need to label my drug but once in a while 
I have very bad experience with me. One time I have injected the uh, in a cesarean section. Uh, I have injected the bupivacaine, 2 ml bupivacaine I have loaded, uh, sorry, 4 ml bupivacaine I have loaded for spinal, 2 ml I have given and 2 ml bupivacaine just I kept beside my, uh, in a, on, on the dashboard of my anesthesia only and I kept. And I was confused between that uh, bupivacaine and that one, uh, oxytocin ampule. And ultimately after CS, uh, after baby came out, I, uh, I had given the uh, bupivacaine instead of that uh, uh, <coughs> oxytocin and that time I felt so scared that uh, oh, I had given the local anesthetic directly to a patient's vein and uh, uh, luckily ultimately uh, we kept patient on obs in observation and we had the interlipid everything so nothing happened we had done resuscitation everything went well but thing is that sometime it can happen by mistake you can pick up the wrong drug Rather than the, the local anesthetic or rather than, sorry, rather than the muscle relaxant, you are, uh, you have loaded the lignocaine or you have loaded the bupiacaine and uh, in a hurry, uh, you ultimately give the bupiacaine 4 ml, 5 ml uh, instead of the, uh, your, so, uh, your uh, muscle relaxant, atracurium or cardiac arrhythmia or it can cause now because of time so we discuss everything each and every step but you know our skill development workshop in delhi on 6th and 7th april we we are preparing all this thing in 360 degree angle that where freelancing is uh, uh, means uh, where chances of mistake will be there or where freelancing is getting stuck up uh, and uh, it can lead to the uh, compromise in patient's care or it can lead to the compromise in patient's safety. So all this thing we'll discuss in detail during our conference time. But as of now, we are doing, just showing the major, major like uh, points, subjective and objective challenges for the freelancers. So this is the, our vision. See, this anesthetist, freelancer's anesthetist, he is not, you can see his face. He don't have the uh, USD equipment, he don't have the workstation, he don't have the uh, fiber optic uh, laryngoscope, he don't have video laryngoscope, and uh, he is feeling so, like, uh, assumed that I don't have such kind of advanced equipment, I should not uh, tackle this kind of case. And ultimately, he is cancelling the surgery and he is referring to the uh, cases to the corporate or private hospital. And you can see the confidence of this anesthetist that he, uh, how he is uh, <coughs> with all this equipment, how he is, uh, how confidence he on his face. So, ultimate uh, moral of story is that how we can <coughs> maximum equalize the gap between the freelancers. Uh, and the anesthetic is practicing in private sector. So, uh, moral of story or our vision behind our all skill development academy is how to abolish the gap between the freelance practice and corporate practice. And uh, see, I will show you one example also. Recently, one patient with zero mouth opening, I have managed that case without any advanced airway equipment. <laughs> So I had, but without treatment, I had treatment that patient. I saw the video of that uh, patient. So this is the case of sub mucosal oral submucosal fibrosis, and this patient came for us, <coughs> came for uh, mouth opening surgery. Uh, I will show you the video of this patient. Uh, in Gujarati language, he is talking, but uh, I'll. I just want to show that how much he is able to knock on. See. See, he is not able to open the mouth more than 1 to 2 mm. And this case, without video laryngoscope, without any advanced airway, even if I have everything, I kept all this thing in backup. But I had managed this case without uh, help of advanced airway equipment also. So, because this case, you know that in Junagad and even in Rajkot also, patient went to 5 to 6 setup. But everywhere, because of NS that is uh, reason, they cancelled the case and they couldn't do the case. 
and that patient came to my village i have my 25 bedded hospital in a small uh, village area that is around 10 10000 population village western village of junagadh district so this patient came to me that everywhere in rajkot and uh, bhavnagar every uh, sadhan are telling that because of your restricted mouth opening uh, anesthetists are not uh, ready to give case and i went to the one corporate hospital in uh, bhavnagar but uh, surgeons uh, that charge they are telling 1.5 lakh for this surgery usually this surgery uh, regular cost is 60 to 70 thousand rupees so this patient came to me and uh, i told, uh, gave him confidence that uh, even if this uh, my area is village area i uh, we don't have any like an uh, advanced uh, set, set up like a corporate hospital and all but still i can able to manage your case and i um, in almost half price i will do this case here at my setup so i called surgeon uh, from uh, Rajkot and I, I'll show you the video how I managed this case, how I built uh, airway with uh, in this case. So first I, I, I prepared airway with uh, giving block. I have blocked the superior laryngeal now and I have blocked the uh, given, uh, I have given transcranial block. This is simple method. You have to just palpate the greater form of uh, higher bone bilaterally and you have to inject hardly 2 ml of local anesthetics at that area. <laughs> and uh, I have muted the video because uh, now uh, means uh, that explanation I didn't do in that video. So unnecessary voice was there. So as I'm giving the superior laryngeal nerve block. I have palpated the greater cornua. Now I am giving, uh, I am palpated the cricothyroid membrane and I am injecting the local anesthetic. Uh, <laughs> I have just infiltrated with local anesthetic. <laughs> so after local anesthetic uh, infiltration, I have used a uh, 18 gauge epidural needle just to locate the trachea. I am going to perform the retrograde nasal intubation for this case. <laughs> now I have, uh, uh, I, this is local anesthetic, I filled syringe. So uh, I am aspirating and I see that uh, bubbles are coming, that means my needle tip is inside the trachea. So I will inject the uh, 2 to 3 ml of local anesthetic in trachea in that are uh, inside the trachea just to give transtracheal block. <laughs> so uh, I am locating the trachea. Yeah, this is a very simple method. You just have to give LOR like LOR technically. You, I have aspirated and that sound was coming. So you can see that around 2 to 3 ml, I have injected local anesthetic transtracheally. Thus, you have to uh, able to recognize the LOR, loss of resistance. You will feel hard while pricking the trachea. Once uh, resistance will go, just see, see, I'll show you video again. Yeah. Once you will remove the syringe, that bubble are coming out from the lumen, you will able to see. See, yeah, this is the confirm that my local anesthetic went inside the trachea. Now, I am passing the guide wire. This is the guide wire and this guide wire like uh, from central line I took means central line I, I have one used central line and guide wire was uh, means that open central line was there. I took the central wire uh, central uh, that uh, guide wire from the central line and I am negotiating that central line guide wire through that epidural needle and uh, I will just tell patient that if you feel something like a body sensation in your oropharynx or uh, of pharynx, just let me know. I'm asking patient uh, totally. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. I'm just asking patient that able to feel. Yeah, he's telling yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm uh, like uh, passing the guide wire. Yeah, see, from left nostril. My guide wire is coming out. You can see. Yeah, you can see nicely my guide wire is coming out from left nostril. You can see. So now I will, I have short and video and I'm like, a, uh, because of time availability, just I will, uh, this, I, my track for the intubation is got cleared. So I will just attach the, uh, that one, uh, uh, mosquito, mosquito forcep to the guide wire to avoid the guide wire push up, uh, means pulling out of guide wire. So, so I have attached the mosquito wire and I will withdraw the guide wire from nasal orifice. And I will try to 
fast i did see i have negotiated it and uh, where i won't able to negotiate the attitude then i will just withdraw the guide very slowly and i will push the simultaneously i will push the attitude so now my attitude, attitude is inside the trachea yeah. <laughs> And now you can confirm if your tube is in trachea or not. You can confirm. You can ask patient because this patient is fully aware. You can see that this patient is not coughing at all because we have prepared airway uh, with local anesthetics. Very good, very good way. How to prepare airway in the local uh, with local anesthetics? That is the main skill for successful awake nasal intubation. So in this case, uh, we have prepared airway very well. So the patient, even a patient in struggle, when uh, my tube or my guide wire touch the uh, trachea, or because trachea and larynx and or vocal cord all are very very sensitive structure, uh, chances of coughing will be once you hit that structure, uh, patient will start immediately start coughing. So first thing is you have to prepare the airway very well. Then only you can successfully intubate patient with this technique. And once. You successfully interpret patient, and you just ask patient to tell his name. If he is able to tell his name, that means your tube might be in esophagus. Because see, if tube will be there between the vocal cord, then patient won't able to tell his name effectively. So you just ask patient his uh, to tell his name. If he is not able to tell his name, that means you are successfully done your job. So this is the subjective method. You can check. You not need to check with ETCO2. You not need to check it with chest rise, or you need not need to check with your below rise like a uh, band circuit back rising up or not. So this thing you can do because of time availability. I am going to next slide. Yeah, this case we had done at our setup. Uh, we had done nasolabial tapping surgery, and we have opened this patient's mouth more than two finger after surgery. Yeah, this is the pre-operative patient's photo, and this is the post-operative patient's photo. Uh, this surgery we had done at our village area. This 1.5 lakh surgery we had done in 70,000 rupees, almost half rupees only. And this for this surgery, patient uh, was trying to go to uh, Bhavnagar, but actually near to his home, he he had uh, we had done his surgery. No need to go uh, to higher center for such kind of <coughs> surgery because of anesthesia limitations. So uh, this thing, all these things are very important. If you don't have your uh, advanced airway equipment, that is also okay. If you, you know how to prepare airway very well, how to negotiate the tube or how to negotiate the, your guide wire. That is the main learning curve uh, for this uh, retrograde nasal intubations. Now coming to the brief introduction of, uh, about our existing. Now uh, I'm coming about our innovative device cell. <coughs> See, uh, now uh, all of majority are knowing that our one basic PNS device is in, already in market. So, and many anesthetists learned many blocks after uh, purchasing device from us. Many anesthetists get, got motivated after, uh, I think around 1000 plus installations are there across the world. So, many anesthetists are calling me and uh, um, giving bless to, uh, blessing to me that because of you only, I uh, could able to do this kind of high-risk surgery or this kind of like lumbar plexus, sacral plexus, uh, pain management blocks or many, many uh, like mandibular now and other other blocks uh, because of your instrument. So once you will start using PNS, you will realize the all this thing. Now uh, we are planning to upgrade ourselves, our, our device also. We are planning to make our digital display and in that we incorporate the now mapper also. As well as we are planning to incorporate neuromuscular uh, blockage monitoring thing also. So in that case, uh, high risk surgery or some kind of like a airway surgery uh, under general anesthesia case, you will exactly got get to know about depth of your muscle relaxation also and when to give muscle relaxation and when not to give muscle relaxation that thing. So that are under pipeline, but uh, definitely within a one year, our that neuromuscular monitoring uh, device as well as our now mapping device also will be there in market. And one of the smallest size PNS device also we are under R and D phase, so one of the that device will be less than <coughs> very very small size device. I think around uh, what we tell matches. 
uh, that uh, small size of small box, <laughs> uh, small, very, very small size uh, device also we are um, planning to put up in market also. So that almost R&D everything is going on. So within a one year, we'll get all this license and after all, we'll commercially launch. Uh, that already clinical trial and majority thing are get completed, but uh, patent and many, many uh, like administrative things are pending. <coughs> Second thing is we are planning to make because PNS is one time investment, but needle is the main factor. People are not using PNS device. So needle also we are planning to make cost effective. Uh, so almost half price cost, almost half compared to the market, almost half price needle we are planning to many because in India needle, no one is manufacturing needles. So we are planning to uh, set up the one needle manufacturing plant and that needle also we are planning to make reusable needle. It's not like that uh, one time you use and you have to throw down needle because every time patient won't give you a thousand rupees for your needle. Right. So uh, we are planning to, our R&D work, everything is going on. So we are planning to make reusable needles and around 10 to 15 blocks you can give with needle or sometimes you can give like a 13, 15 blocks also as per needles quality we will make much superior quality needles. So around 30 to 50 blocks also you can give with one needle and <coughs> you can enjoy the uh, your original anesthesia with PNS device. So that thing also uh, mostly within a one year we will launch it. And third one is the our ultra slim blood slim blood video laryngoscope. We were uh, uh, around like a less than 0.5 centimeter or 5 mm diameter mouth of, oh, sorry 5 mm <coughs> mouth opening is also there. Then also you can uh, effectively intubate the your patient with uh, our ultra slim blood video laryngoscope. So our R and D work everything is going on. We have done tie up with one Malaysian based. Uh, this one camera manufacturing company and they have uh, all this like uh, work workout already done and uh, they have already given us demo piece also the trial piece also and we successfully completed our clinical trial on it also so within a one year once patent everything will get uh, we will get we'll get the uh, this kind of uh, uh, video ultra slim blood video like scope within a one year and uh, with that scope less than five uh, millimeter uh, mouth opening case also you can integrate with that case. The, I, I, I just show you the clarity of vision with this uh, our uh, ultra slim blood video laryngoscope. So uh, I, I can't show you design because of pattern is pending, but I can show you the video. This is the video I have integrated the around 3 uh, mm mouth opening case with this our video laryngoscope, ultra slim blood video laryngoscope. And you can see the nice view of the vocal cord. You can see the epiglottis. You can see the uh, or laryng of helix. This is nasal intubation we have done and you can nicely see the tube is coming and tube is the hitting the vocal cord. So <laughs> you can see the uh, clarity of image and that video laryngoscope cost also will be almost half compared to the existing video laryngoscope available in market and that also will be like uh, this also will be much much superior in terms of uh, your uh, means it will broaden the your usage compared to the existing video laryngoscope. So this thing also under my <coughs> pipeline. And third thing is the one of the most our like novel anesthesia device, airway management device is coming into market. And this device will revolutionary, I am confidently telling that it will revolutionary changes the whole airway management scenario <laughs> in the whole world. This is the first time we are launching, but uh, already our clinical trial, everything is got completed. But uh, some official procedure, patent, and uh, some uh, administrative CDS for license, as well as our uh, many administrative things are pending. But uh, so we can't release the image and we can't declare much about that uh, uh, airway management device. But once it will come in market, you will really uh, hit your any kind of difficult airway case with uh, this device in a very, very confident way. It's much, much superior and much, much like a advanced anesthesia device. This is a whole novel drastically change the, uh, and make a revolutionary changes in uh, this uh, airway management practice. But uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, release the image of that device uh, because of some confidentiality. Uh, anyway, don't worry, uh, within a one to two year, it will be commercialized and that device also will go, we are planning to make it accessible as well as affordable to all anesthetists. So it will be almost half price compared to your 
फाइबर ऑप्टिक लेरिंगोस्कोप और योर कैमरा सिस्टम बेस्ड फाइबर लेस लेरिंगोस्कोप सो नाउ डिफिकल्ट एरवे केस विल नो नो मोर विल बी अ डिफिकल्ट एरवे इन इन फ्यूचर बट एनीवे बिकॉज़ ऑफ टाइम शॉर्टेज वी आर गोइंग अहेड see this is the our academy we are uh, uh, every three month we have planned a workshop in each and every region so we are trying to access the india first because this is the our native country and i have so much respect about our native uh, and uh, oh, we are planning to start our uh, academic launching from delhi <coughs> one of the capital of india and probably our health minister also, dr mansukh mandaviya ji also will join our event if possible then uh, so uh, we are planning to uh, first start our um, uh, skill development academy from uh, our capital of india delhi on 6th and 7th april i am heartily welcome everyone to join our skill development academy to learn advanced thing in your routine anesthesia practice it will make much much more difference in doing your routine anesthesia practice so just spare two days time from your routine practice and you will learn a lot like a five year learning you will finish it in two or two days workshop i will definitely confidently telling you that any kind of difficult any case any kind of uh, like a difficult spinal case or some kind of like a cases you can't give spinal you can't give ga you can't give uh, epidural uh, so uh, in such cases you can confidently tell yes to your surgeon if you know how to give the now block with your pns lumbar flexor sec around like 15 to 20 pns guided now blocks we are planning to live demonstrate in that conference and workshop and uh, difficult have a procedure also we are planning to live demonstrate in the workshop as well as segment as final procedure also we are planning to live demonstrate in that workshop so uh, i am heartily uh, welcoming all of you who are interested in uh, workshop so registration are already open if anyone uh, wants to join you can directly contact me my whatsapp number also i am giving in last slide or you can go to he, he or she can go to our website and through website he will get the our uh, all this uh, registration detail or our next schedule detail we are planning to conduct that our workshop in april to delhi in uh, hyderabad in july or august for date it to finalize uh, in south zone our rad workshop will be there in hyderabad and north zone our rads workshop is there in delhi and uh, east zone our workshop possibly will be there in this pur or eta nagar we uh, will see the feasibility of the air connectivity and accordingly will decide that this pur or eta nagar in december month it will be there for east zone and uh, for <coughs> west zone it will be there in ahmedabad or gandhi nagar uh, in march 2025 so for workshop we have already scheduled out <coughs> next anyone you wants to conduct whatsapp then in uh, he or can uh, she can contact me any time on my personal number i will support him or i will uh, sort out issues to conduct such kind of workshop just he have to make sure that hospital availability and case availability will be there to perform live demonstration of all procedure otherwise we'll take care of our budget as well as our faculty as well as registration as well as all other uh, cme credit point Uh, all when you everything will sort out but uh, he or whoever wants to conduct that kind of workshop he or she has to give surety that we want uh, we will uh, coordinate and we uh, can provide the uh, live demonstration <coughs> operation theater or live demonstration cases uh, for your workshop and we'll go ahead uh, accordingly he or she don't need to form his own like a uh, website or any other like a uh, buzzer he don't even if loss will happen he or she don't need to worry about his come uh, out take out money from his pocket and contribute for a uh, workshop and all that budget uh, financial thing and all this thing will take care only thing he has or she has to give surety to us that will provide you hospital setup for live demonstration and as well as will provide you surgeons uh, sorry uh, patients for live demonstration that two thing he or she has to got and it otherwise when you everything will work out and will go ahead so <clears throat> this our for workshop finalized and once the date of the north oh, sorry east zone or south zone and west zone will be finalized will officially declare on our website 
or else you can call me uh, and you will get detail about uh, upcoming workshop. So these are the detail of our uh, academy. These are the website address. We have officially launched our website also. This is our email address. Any kind of communication you can do with our website uh, or email ID. Or this is our YouTube channel also. You can launch the many blogs or live demonstration procedure with our uh, YouTube channel also. And this is our Facebook Global NSS Skill Development Academy page. You can subscribe our Facebook page and you can get uh, in detail about upcoming workshop conference or you can uh, uh, like uh, discuss various iris cases or you can put the iris cases on our Facebook page and you can get experts opinion uh, how to manage that kind of cases uh, by subscribing or by doing like on our Facebook page. And this is my own personal number. You can note down my number also. So anytime you need any face, facing uh, difficulty or any kind of help you re uh, require from your side regarding uh, anesthesia related iris cases or anything, you can contact me anytime 24 by 7, night 12 o'clock also you can call me and I will be happy to help you out for such kind of, I, I have, I am working as a wash, every, even if uh, in cardiac setup, I also I have worked up, I know uh, echocardiography also very well, I know the difficult airway, I know the uh, segment of spinal as well as uh, uh, iris, uh, like a, uh, orthopedic trauma cases, PNS guided blocks as well as USB, all, yeah, I am trained in all this way, so I can try to work out from my side as much as uh, as a perioperative physician, if any uh, difficulty or anything uh, you need in future from my side, and 24 by 7, you can without any uh, hesitation, you can call me anytime <coughs> uh, to get support from my side. Okay, thank you. <coughs> now I am just uh, opening the my uh, like uh, I am unmuting. Uh, anyone have any question or anything? Uh, he or she can. Uh, talk to me. So I am unmuting all of you. You can uh, anyone if you want, have a question regarding our academy or regarding our work or anything, any question is there, you can now also talk to me. <laughs> Dawal, un <laughs> hello, Dr. Uh, Mr. Dawal, technical person is here. Oh, anyone uh, wants any uh, anyone have any doubts or any questions? He can he or she can unmute himself, and he can he or she can directly ask question to me. Hello. Yes, sir. Tell me. Naka book ka hansu milagi? Book. Actually, book in Gujarati language may be labor analysis book. Hai. If you want labor analysis book in, in English, English, already translation is done, but it's under printing. So uh, just be in touch with me when it will be launched, means when it will be released in market. May Apko uh, Duga. I will courier it or anywhere, we'll sort out that thing. Okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, yeah. Gujarati medium ki book kaha se available hogi? Uh, Gujarati medium ki book I have uh, enough stock. If you want that 10 rupees price is there per book. Uh, so yeah. if you want a uh, book that uh, according as per your quantity, you can uh, tell me, I will uh, courier it to you, uh, your class. So it's a uh, very economical range, around 10 rupees price only. Courier charge hardly 100 rupees will be there extra. So as per your requirement, you can tell me the quantity and later on. Uh, will work out. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Then shall we go ahead to our next session? <laughs> Dr. Ruturaj is uh, presenting our next session and that session is on uh, PNS guided freelancers to most favorite block. PNS guided supraclavicular that is known as a upper limb of spinal and PNS guided interscalene block that freelancers to most favorite blocks. Dr. Ruturaj, one of the our upcoming faculty of our upcoming workshop in Delhi is conducting a <coughs> workshop. So, so sorry, uh, he is uh, one of the uh, our 
faculty and he is working in Jaldgaon and uh, every day is performing three to four now blocks with PNS device and he is very confidently giving the all kind of now blocks. So uh, I am handing over uh, next session to Dr. Ruturas Kakad to present freelancers to most favorite block PNS guided supraclavicular as well as PNS guided interscalene brachial plexus block. Dr. Ruturas. Hello. Yeah, you uh, you are audible. Yeah. 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 Good evening, everyone. Uh, actually, I'm middle of the surgery, so if any obstruction or any hurdles, uh, please excuse me for that. Uh, actually, the thyroid surgery turned out to be a malignant one, so it has taken a quite a <coughs> long time. Okay, so I can take both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go ahead. Sir. 